Thanks, Bea. Yes. Okay. All right. So my first book, I'm going to use my chapter book to talk about. It is called The Empire Striketh Back. Yes. <laughs> it is by yes. Ian Drosher. He wrote um, some grammar books and stuff. He's really passionate about making connections to literature for students. So passionate, in fact, that on his website, he actually has an educator's guide to teach all of his five Star Wars books oh in Shakespearean prose. It goes through like Shakespearean language and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a really great introduction play to use in like an ele not elementary, in a middle school or even a high school level <laughs> to really pique students' interest in Shakespeare and get them involved in it. And it is an easier language level. And it's based on the movies. So if you have a kid that likes Star Wars, they know exactly what's going on in these books. So it's really cool. So before I even get into reading anything, um, this is the fifth book. It's also like The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> okay, so he has a trailer on YouTube for his oh, that's amazing. book, oh, so you get to check it out. The new enemy arises. The war shall surely join them. War shall die. Okay, so it's kind of like he, as you can see, it was kind of funny. Um, you had people from Star Wars wearing like Shakespearean gear and stuff. So you can even do a history lesson on that. You can go back to talk about what people were doing in the Middle Ages and different things. So it's a really cool book to kind of use. And he incorporates humor throughout all of it. It's really kind of just epic. So I'm going to read some excerpts from this for you guys. I'm going to start off with the prologue. He has a course in here, so it's set up like a play. So prologue, outer space, enter course. Oh, tis for the rebellion a dark time, for though they have the Death Star all destroyed, imperial troops did from the ashes climb and push the rebels closer to the void. Across the galaxy, pursued with speed, the rebels flee the imperial Starfleet vast. A group with Luke Skywalker in the lead, half to the ice world known as Hoth, flow and fast. Meanwhile, the cruel Darth Vader is obsessed with finding young Skywalker. Thus, he hath, through every point of space, begun his quest by sending robot probes to aid his wrath. In time so long ago begins our play in a war-torn galaxy far, far away. So, as you can see, it's like an easier kind of set with it, and it's easy to understand, right? It's, it's got a nice flow to it. So I'm going to read another excerpt from Act 1. Um, he uses all of the characters, so this is kind of like where the humor comes in. I am not very good at this, so you can laugh at me if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> Enter Chewbacca, working on the Millennium Falcon. I say Chewbacca, hoy, I, Chewie, <laughs> Lose thy temper, gentle Wookiee, nay, but patience, patience, I shall help thee soon. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I don't know if I would require students to read this out loud. <laughs> for fear of chaos. But it's really fun. And it, it has, he has voices for all the characters. So in the scene three on the first act, um, C3PO talks with R2D2. C3PO says, Oh, R2, dost thou ever plague me so? Even now have we been in dishonor sent away from our good princess's chamber. Fie! Such breach of etiquette and protocol. And the fault doth on my shoulders lie. R2 responds, beep, meep, beep, meep, beep, beep, meep, meep, meep. <laughs> So, and then there's actually a point at which R2-D2 has a sides. So he kind of like steps away and you get to hear R2's voice. So he gives all of the characters a voice. And he like basically protrudes R2-D2 as this really smart bot that's like C-3PO. Just like, go away. <laughs> and um, because I have to, I'm going to read from Darth Vader. Yes. I'm not going to read Darth Vader. Okay. All right, so he is here kind of talking about his pursuant of Luke Skywalker and his draw towards him. So if you had people that hadn't known about the Star Wars plot and that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's dad, 
they wouldn't know about it in this point. Like he doesn't give it away, but he kind of foreshadows. So it says here, nay, that is the system, certain I am of it. So he's talking to his general saying he knows of Skywalker's here. And Skywalker is with them there. Now set thy course toward Hoth, and General Veers, prepare your men for combat. Exuant Admiral Azul, General Veers, and Captain Piet. Hath not a Sith eyes? Hath not a Sith such feelings, heart, and soul as any Jedi Knight did ever possess? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you blast us, shall we not injured be? If you assault with lightsaber, do we not die? I have a body as do other men, though made in part of wires and steel, and I, I various passions feel as all men do. So I, a Sith, shall not distracted be till I attain the thing for which I seek. Therefore, I shall pursue this Skywalker unto the limit of the galaxy. For true, he hath the Death Star quite destroyed, and true, he hath the Force with him as well. But truly, more than that, the boy doth have, for truth be told, his name doth stir my soul. The boy's connection to myself I do not understand as yet. This Skywalker must have some link to my life past. But what? So shall this Sith pursue this rebel lad and find the missing truth of Vader's life. Um, Yoda is also introduced in this storyline, and it's really cool because Yoda talks like this. And so what he did is he actually has Yoda talking in haiku. So it's really cool because you can introduce so many different forms of writing with this kind of novel. Oh, I love that. So it's great. I love it. And also for super fun, you can like show the movie after. <laughs> Why not? Okay. So, can I just touch the button? Thank you. So, for my picture book, I was looking at Vivian Schwarz. She's written three books. This is her newest book. It's called Is There a Dog in This Book? Her first book is Are There Cats in This Book? And the second book is There Are No Cats in This Book. <laughs> <laughs> she is English and she went to school. She's been all over the place. She actually started like programs to get kids educated into art. So she does like art programs and she's created like treasure hunts. Her website has freebies so you can like knit her cats. And this is where I got these cutouts for. Um, so, and it's like free and it's great. She sells her artwork. So like everyone else, when you're talking, she does her own artwork in her books. So it's really cool. Um, she is British and she actually gets to read this book. So I don't know like if you guys want to also be on the same side because it's an interactive book. As you work through the book, the kids get to like open oh, fun things oh and do some reading and the cats are discovering whether or not there is indeed a dog in this book. So I'm just gonna like let you guys kind of freebie with this and I'm actually gonna play her reading her book. So she's gonna do my book talk. There are three cats in this book. They're on the next page. Oh, hello. You opened our book. Come and look at all the pages. Wait, is there somebody else in this book? Somebody's drunk up all our milk. Somebody's chewed my tiny toys. You don't want to do that, would you? Is there a dog in this book? <laughs> oh no, we don't want to meet a dog. What is a dog? Dogs are snappy and yappy, smelly and noisy, hairy and scary, and dogs hate cats. Oh, quick friend, hide us. Can you move the sofa? Oh, there is a dog in this book, isn't there? <laughs> meeting the dog and the dog becomes their friend and they actually end up asking you to pet the dog near the end of the book and at that point you scare the dog away Aww. and then you have to find the dog and you can't find the dog 
And you eventually find the dog hiding, scared, and then he becomes your friend. Aww. <laughs> so it is a really enormously cute interactive book. I would use this for really like little ones. Um, probably no more than grade three, but it's great because it introduces dialogue so they get to learn about how different people speak and mm -hmm. they get to interact. So I did my teaching plan on this and I was talking about how you could use it from a health perspective and you could talk about how maybe if you have a new student coming into your classroom, how they might feel when they're meeting new students or even if you have like a new change in your family or anything like that, this would be a really good book to get kids to kind of think about how other people feel even if things are different than what they're used to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really fun and cute. So kids Aww. like to learn to play. So as part of these, these handouts that I showed you, I actually went out and cut them out. And for a little fun activity to end off the day, I thought you guys could pick some cats. Vivian Schwartz has these, and she wants you to go around and take pictures with her cats. Yeah. And you can have them in your books. So you could use this with a carry-on for kids at the beginning, and they can take these in their books. They can put them in mom's recipe books. They can put them wherever they want mm. to kind of get them involved with the books. So it's kind of really fun. Yeah. You guys can go take pictures and have fun with them if you want. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> well done. Or is it all good to stop?